The Hal Ajit, which is Sanskrit for invincible or unconquerable, was a jet-propelled light fighter designed as a low-level interceptor aircraft with added ground attack capability. Being a derivative of the fallen Nat, which was a British manufactured jet, the Ajit was license built by HAL just like the Nat, but it was visually similar to its predecessor. One of the most significant changes for the Ajit was the addition of a wet wing, housing aviation fuel in the interior space within the wing, leading to an expansion of its internal fuel capacity and the freeing up of two underwing hardpoints that had previously been occupied by external fuel tanks. Furthermore, this aided the carriage of greater weapon loads due to the two extra available freed up hardpoints. The only other striking difference between the NAT and the Ajit was that the VHF antenna was moved from behind the cockpit to under the nose. The Ajit was operated by the Indian Air Force between 1977 and 1991 and while the Nats saw much action during the 1965 and 1971 wars earning the notorious name of Sabre Slayers for shooting down enemy F-86 Sabre jets, the Ajit kind of remained unproven in battle. Despite the shortcomings of the Ajit, it was much loved in the Indian and foreign aviation services primarily because it was then the smallest fighter in the world with a length of just 9.04 meters, a wingspan of just 6.7 meters and a height of just 2.4 meters. That literally can find its own space to fit in a 2 BHK apartment. The pilots could literally jump climb into the cockpit from the ground without the assistance of a ladder unlike all other jets of that era and even today. So today I've decided to build this special hobby kit and I'm going to build the Ajith Indian light fighter. Number 2 Squadron Winged Arrows was the only squadron that used the Ajiths and you can see that the special hobby kit comes with these four marking options all four are of the HAL Ajits. So let's begin with the unboxing of the kit and see what's inside the box. So the sprues come packed in a single self-sealing plastic bag. And here's the uh, second smaller plastic bag with the clear parts and the canopy. And you can see that one of the canopies is cracked. But I'm a little relaxed because I'm going with a closed canopy and my canopy is intact so here's a look at the uh, detail on the sprues and you can see that amazing amount of detail let me bring a close up here look at that amazing amount of detail on the wheels and here on the drop tanks crisp recessed panel lines and it says made by MPM production which was eventually special hobby beautiful details And here's a look at some uh, amazing detail on the engine, the exhaust and this sprue comes with two different kinds of noses. I think you can construct the fighter nose and the reconnaissance nose. Uh, but the Indian Ajits were all fighters so I'll go with that. Here's the last sprue and here is some amazing amount of detail that you see here on the fuselage. And let me give you another close up here. Look at that amazing detail all recessed panel lines on the fuselage and the air intakes beautifully done and here's some amazing recess detail on the wing so it's going to be an interesting build and i am excited to start off with it so here's a look at the uh, booklet style instruction sheet with some information about the ajith on page one followed by the sprue map it gives these red x's which are parts that are there in the uh, british nats and not in the indian ajiths seven steps in total for the assembly followed by these four very enticing schemes two squadron indian air force was the only one that used the ajits and i will be going with this nice scheme right here's the uh, beautifully printed decal sheet by cartograph you can see that it's in good register nice marking options there are basically a total of four marking options here that you can pick from depending on the scheme you're working on Right, step number one is application of the decals on the instrument panel. 
and it shows you part numbers 39 and 40 and here in the sprue map part numbers 39 and 40 are on sprue C whereas if you pick up the sprues you do find part numbers 39 and 40 but they are not on sprue C but on sprue B special hobby you've got to do a better job of it Here's the rather straightforward assembly of the cockpit floor with the bulkhead and you can see that the uh, control column fits in very nicely and the entire structure of the cockpit floor is very detailed and good looking. Sinoacrylate glue, better known as Febiquick in India is my go-to glue for joining all the parts of the kit. It's cheap and readily available and it does the job pretty nicely. So the seat instrument panel, the cockpit floor and the exhaust nozzles have been assembled but here you notice that there is a huge seam line right along the entire exhaust nozzle plus the uh, rear part doesn't align so that will need some sanding. I then followed it up with a black paint on the instrument panel and detailing of the instrument dials with a white wash. The detailing of the uh, cockpit switches then followed suit. I then cut out the uh, fuselage halves from the sprues and then began the assembly of the interiors of the fuselage starting with the cockpit and I followed it up with the assembly of the exhaust nozzle. The exhaust nozzle and the engine assembly were painted black because in any case they're going to be inside the fuselage so I did not detail it beyond a simple black primer. The fit I would say is pretty nice. They just sit into their respective slots and then I closed up the fuselage and you can see what a wonderful fit this is. The wings were then cut out from the sprues and then simply assembled onto the upper part of the fuselage and the wing assembly is very very snug. It just literally slides into place and look at that amazing fit of the wings there with the fuselage. This was followed by the assembly of the horizontal stabilizers and the vertical stabilizer and the fit was very very nice indeed and finally here you can see it begins to look like a gnat. As I mentioned earlier that one of the significant differences between the Ajith and the Nat was the placement of the VHF antenna under the nose of the Ajith. So you have to take that into account while constructing the nose of the Nat or the Ajith in this kit. Finally with the nose on it begins to look like an Ajith and I could now continue with the build further. After having maxed off the cockpit, I found a few places that would need filling, starting with this little space in the exhaust and a little seam line in the center of the lower fuselage and this entire seam line that goes around the uh, fit of the nose to the fuselage. Nothing major, it can be fixed and then I moved on to the painting. I then used this uh, bright chrome rattle can spray to paint the entire body of the Ajith. However, as opposed to what is mentioned on the spray can, 
that the paint dries within 15 minutes. This paint took almost forever to dry. I had to leave it painted and untouched for almost two days and even after two days I felt that there were still places on the model that were still wet. So in hindsight I did feel that a primer probably would have helped in curing the paint faster. However the results speak for themselves and it gave a very very nice bright chrome finish to the entire model. I then prepared the Fevicryl grey paint by mixing white and black in the right amount to get the correct shade of the paint and my research revealed that these stripes on the Ajit were actually grey as opposed to what's mentioned in the uh, instructions. The instructions call for an olive drab shade however from the research that I did and help from other fellow modelers I found out that this paint was actually grey and not olive drab so special hobby does need to correct that someday and finally the last thing but not least was the assembly of the seat inside the cockpit now the seat does not come with any decals for seat belts so I constructed my own with masking tape and I looked at a reference picture of the Ajit's ejection seat and I formed the entire seat belt construction by looking at the picture. Finally it was time to put the markings on and I used my standard procedure of applying the decals. The uh, serial number and the logo on the nose were incorrect for this particular paint scheme. They were not included in the de decal sheet and so I had to print it out on my own. And here is the final completed build of the HAL Ajit from number 2 squadron winged arrows Indian Air Force circa 1980s. My two cents with this kit, it's a lovely little kit and builds up into a nice Nat or Ajit depending on the version that you want and it has practically no fit issues whatsoever except for a little bit of filling that's required here and there which can be addressed by an advanced or a beginner modeler alike. The price of the kit is pretty high but it does justify the amount of detail that is present on this kit. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Click on the thumbs up and a sub to the channel would be incredible. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye and a very happy Republic Day to you all.